Okay, so the meeting is recording. Um, say hi to all your online your friends. Okay, everybody here in person is saying hi to you. Okay. I think only Karen is saying hi to you guys. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, yeah, cool. I hope everybody is doing well. Let's pray and we'll get started, okay? Father, we thank you for today. We thank you that your mercies are new every morning. We thank you, Lord, that we get to wake up we call you Abba, Father. Uh, we, we have this privilege of coming into your presence just as we are. So thank you, Lord. Thank you that for your wonderful mercies and for your faithfulness that sustains us day after day and for this privilege that we have to learn from your word today. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. I pray that even as we learn from your word, I pray that you would teach us because the word says you are our teacher. And as you teach, I pray that we would be sensitive to the leading of your voice. I pray that you would pour out your wisdom, your knowledge, and your understanding over us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen? Okay. Okay. Okay, let me ask this question one more time. How is everyone doing? No? Okay, okay. Okay, how is everyone online doing? Just give me a thumbs up or say fine or whatever. Ren, all fine? Okay, Sri Rada, all good? The okay, weather is uh, not helping us, huh? How many of you wanted to stay in bed today? Liars, the rest of all, all are liars, liars. I know all of us wanted to be in bed today, me included, okay? <laughs> then I remembered, uh, oh, I have a BC class. Uh, so, yeah, here I am. Good, good. Are you enjoying your BC classes so far? Yes? Those of you online, enjoying other rest of your courses? I hope you are. Okay. Um, well, so we've been, uh, this course is about praise and worship. Uh, last class, two weeks ago, I think, uh, we just went through basic definitions of worship, what worship really is, uh, where we went through some of the definitions uh, by other people. Uh, who said worship is this, worship is that, and uh, praise is this, praise is that. And uh, uh, from the previous class, uh, what can you share about what worship is? What do you remember from the last class? Uh, some of the things that we discussed on worship. Uh, and if you online, please feel free to uh, put it on the chat as well. What are some of the things that you remember? Just yell it out, shout. It's an action. It's an action, a verb. Yeah, it's you do things. Yeah, okay. Declaration, you say it. You have to declare it. Okay. Just from the last class, whatever you remember. If it's a wrong answer, I'm, I'm going to shoot you. No, I'm not. <laughs> Come on, guys, online. Uh, what do you remember from the last class? So just feel free to share it on the chat. And Yeah. Expressing your love, okay, to God, all right, what else? Acknowledging, okay. What, the only two of them was there in class the last time. Yeah. Taking, taking a minute to say I love you, Father, is also worship. It's as simple as that, right? We've somehow managed to complicate it. Uh, well, guys, come on, online, talk to me, Krisha. Jachan, Shiv Kumar, talk to me. Okay. We are not initiators of uh, worship, God is. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. That's a good point. Someone was listening. <laughs> what else? Francis, what do you remember? I was not here in class. So. Another. Another? <laughs> like that only. <laughs> well, it's very yeah. He's done something inside and outside of me. Okay. Thank you once again. Worship can be in any form that is thanksgiving, gratitude, a love for him. Okay. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. Keep sharing on the chat section. I'm reading it. Uh, what is, what is? Yes, sir. Beg your pardon? Dedicating your time to God, yeah. Dedicating your time to God. 
Uh, one of my friends uh, said uh, one of the most expensive gift you can give someone is your time. Two things, your words and your time. Um, so yeah, what else? What else, what else, anything else? Surrender, yeah. What about praise, do you remember? Anything that we covered on praise? And sacrifice? Sacrifice is giving up or? It's in your notes. <laughs> So sacrifice is all giving up or also taking on something. Okay. Judgment uh, says submission, celebration, honoring, exalting God to magnify him because he is worthy of our worship. Yes. Thanks, uh, Judgment. And uh, wait. Okay. Just hold on a second. Um, Yeah, all right. Surrender, Shiv Kumar says surrender, yeah, thank you. Krisha says, sacrifice is something we aren't obliged to give, but we willing uh, give it, yeah, taking on something, giving up something. So sacrifice, when we use the word sacrifice, it usually means uh, we give up something, right? Uh, I'm giving up, I'm giving this up, so uh, I, yeah, I put it off and I put it on, yeah, thanks. Focus on me. Okay. Okay. Uh, sacrifice is you either give up something. Okay. I want to be, uh, I'm going to sacrifice being uh, with my friends so I can be with my family or taking on something. That means uh, you don't have to, but you do it anyways. But you don't have to, but you do it anyways because. Uh, you want to help that person, you want to do whatever, right? So that is uh, sacrifice. So these are some of the things that we looked at in the last class. Uh, we are still in the praise and worship course, just if you want, in case you're wondering which course you're in, uh, BC105, okay? But today we'll just, as the weeks go by, we'll start going a little deeper and deeper, right? Uh, so we'll look at uh, postures of praise, okay? Um, some of the Hebrew words for praise in this class, okay? Um, but uh, before we start off with the Hebrew words for praise, um, I, I wanted to talk to us about uh, posture of worship, okay? This is something that's not in your notes, but I want to share very briefly about uh, posture okay p o s t u r e okay posture p o s t u r e posture of worship okay uh, does anybody know what a posture is the way you stand the way you sit the way you present yourself posture okay position okay everybody say posture Okay, even those online say posture. Yeah, I heard you. Okay, <laughs> right. So now here in the in the in person class, all of you are you know your hands are on the desk. Okay, you are listening intently. That's a posture, right? It's like oh, I want to listen to Sir today. Okay, some of you are online, I have no idea what your posture is. Okay, so your cameras are off and your leg must be on the table. <laughs> <laughs> it was like this, okay, here's this dude, okay, saying something. Uh, so, yeah, God knows what your posture is, guys. <laughs> uh, but your body language or your posture uh, communicates something, right? It, it It is communicating. What is communicating? You are telling something, isn't it? Right? So, for example, I'm not sure if you can see, but then here's a chair, and if I just sit back like this when you're speaking, <laughs> What does it say? I don't care about what you're really sharing, isn't it? Uh, you know, your hands folded. I'm not just, I'm just saying, okay. Uh, but everything has a posture, right? Um, there is a good posture and there is a bad posture. So if the, if there is good, there has to be a bad, right? I wanted to talk about this very briefly because worship is a posture. Okay, uh, the Google definition uh, defines 
posture as this. And I'll probably I'll share this PDF with you guys. Okay, don't worry. Uh, but if you want to make a note of it, no problem. It says the position. Someone said position, right? Okay, the position in which someone holds their body when standing or sitting. Okay, a position when someone holds their body while standing or sitting. That's posture. And it goes on to say a particular way of dealing with or considering something or an approach or attitude. Okay, so all of this is part of posture. Like how you approach something or what your attitude is and you're, when you're considering something. Now, why am I sharing about all of this is um, now in, in some time we'll talk about seven Hebrew words for praise. Okay, uh, but I also wanted to talk one Hebrew word for worship. Okay, why Hebrew words, uh, you know, blah, 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 and whatnot. Um, See, in English, uh, English is a, is a relatively a simple language. Um, I'll go as far as saying English can be a little boring uh, language. Why am I saying that is, let's take the word love. OK, everybody say love. Everybody online type love, L-O-V-E. Yeah, there you go. Thank you, thank you. OK. now. We use that word for, I mean, so frequently, maybe uh, it's like, uh, I love pizza, I love okay, Indian, I, I love dosa, I love pav bhaji, I, I love burger, okay, continental, <laughs> I love dogs, I love cats, and then you also say, I love my wife, and, and I love my husband. Um, we use the word love for everything right i mean it's i'm just using that as an example um but in ancient greek it had four words for love okay i'm not going to talk about all of that but just so you know in the modern greek there are six words for love and each of those words have a different definition and a meaning to what it relates to um and so that's why Somewhere along the way, when we're translating, you know, the, the ancient scriptures was written in Hebrew and in Greek, isn't it? And so translators, when they were translating the word, um, they have, it's not always that you can find the closest meaning. And so they were just, you know, put on one word, okay, this is what it is, let's put a common word for everything. Uh, and so when you dig deeper into the uh, original language, you get to know, like, okay, there's more different words and meaning to this word called worship and this word called praise. Okay, so that's why we're going to look extensively in, in the next two hours. So first thing, worship is a posture, which is something that we've already learned, right? And we all we spoke about what posture is. Good. There's a good posture, there is a bad posture. Um, so I remember this one time, so I used to play the drums. I used to, um, you know, the drummer has to sit. So when you when you sit on the chair or what we call it as a throne, the throne has to be a set according to your height, uh, you know, so your feet touches the ground naturally. It's not too high where it looks like you're standing and playing the drums. It shouldn't be too low where your legs are so high, you know. Um, so what happened, the throne that I was sitting on wasn't, uh, it was repaired or it was broken. And so I continued to play in a wrong posture for a whole month. And for the next eight months or so, I had a severe lower back issue for eight months. It took me eight months to just come out of that back pain, all because of a bad posture. Life lesson, <laughs> bad posture can hurt you. Right? Okay, so we're going to talk more about it. Uh, if a guy wants to propose to a girl, or a, which a girl wants to propose to a guy, why only guy all the time, you know? <laughs> Whatever, who wants to propose to whoever? Uh, okay, normally a guy, what we would do is he will take a rose or a ring or whatever and say, he'll go down on one knee, like we see in most movies. Okay, he'll go down on one knee, that, that's on posture. If he's messed up really bad, he'll go down on two knees. Okay, 
uh, someone said amen no okay <laughs> So I have never messed up because I don't have a girlfriend, you know, <laughs> right? Uh, okay, because I was raised as a Christian. Uh, okay, <laughs> right. So that's a posture, isn't it? Uh, everything, and you go to a cricket stadium or whichever you know sports thing, or if you know if you watch cricket match or whichever foot, football match you you watched on TV and your your team wins, what's your uh, reaction? You know, yeah, my team won just, you know, fruit of the spirit is self-control. So I'm just controlling myself. No, what's the first reaction? You throw your hands up and you just jump. It's like, yes, and you know, high fives and whatnot, right? That's an expression of what you're feeling on the inside, isn't it? And that is a posture, isn't it? And so similarly, Worship is a posture, and I'll keep, I will keep saying this, because originally Hebrew was a pictorial language. Okay, what do I mean by a pictorial language? It was, they did not have signs. It was like symbols. They would, they would draw, like, you know, what do you say? Carl? Something, okay. So the original image for worship was something like a face down, like, you know, completely on the ground. Uh, that was the image of worship, or that was the posture of worship. It was recognizing or acknowledging that you are in the presence of someone where you cannot defend yourself, and you're saying, okay, I am in the presence of this mighty God. I can't, you know, just lift my face up, the only response as a posture is, I'm going to go face down, right? I mean, you think of this, there are so many times in the Bible, when you read Isaiah chapter 6, which we will later, and Revelation chapter 4, uh, you see these uh, super angels, okay? These crazy creatures, right? Uh, okay. All right, sorry, guys. Their posture is what, uh, for example, Isaiah chapter 6, right? Do you know there are these angels called the seraphim? Okay, serapha, that simply means the burning ones, okay? Serapha means singular, seraphim means plural, okay? So that's what they are. So they are the burning ones. What is their posture? With the two wings, they are flying. With the two, they cover their faces. With the two, they cover their feet. That's another posture of worship is they know that they are in the presence of this awesome God where, you know, even they acknowledge that he is holy, he is set apart. And so the Hebrew people recognized the same thing and said, okay, this is the image of worship is face down. Right? Are you guys with me? Right? So... And then much later, they came up with this word, uh, the Hebrew word for worship, uh, write it down. It's S-H-A-C-H-A-H. S-H-A-S-H-A-C-H-A-H. Okay? Shaha. Okay, everybody say Shaha. Okay, are you ready for this? We're going to try it like a Middle Eastern way a little bit. You're going to add a little bit of phlegm into it. Shaha. Or suddenly we are all civil. Yeah. Come on, let's try that again, guys. Okay, even you guys online. Okay. Shaha. Yeah, no phlegm. <laughs> okay, one more time. Everybody's trying, Sri Rada. It's like, oh, let's just let's leave me alone, you know. <laughs> it's fun, but. Yeah, but that's the word, shaha, okay? Uh, it means the same thing, to bow down or to fall down flat. Uh, you know, it means to put your face where it belongs, right? To put your face in its place. It's the ultimate picture of humility. Okay? It's the ultimate picture of humility and absolute surrender 
if you hear, if you've been hearing the APC's declaration that we do at church, this is God's word, this is God speaking to me, right? Uh, and towards the very end, it says, I am in absolute surrender. That means what you're really saying is you're face down. I have no control over myself. I give my all to you. I humble myself before you. You are my king. I am your servant. You do whatever you want to do with me. That is what absolute surrender simply means. That is the posture of worship. Right? Are you guys with me? Yes? Uh, any questions or thoughts? Because I'm cool to continue. You guys following? Yeah, all okay? Yeah. Hmm, okay. <laughs> right, so if a good posture of worship is humility, what is a bad posture? It's not difficult, no? It's an easy answer. Pride. Everybody say pride. Pride. Okay, say it with a little proud in your heart, okay? So say pride. <laughs> really? No, no, Pastor. I'm very humble to be proud. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's go to uh, Isaiah chapter 14, everybody. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 14. And this is a kind of uh, a scripture that we'll probably come back in the future as well. But the first one of the first worship leader had a had a huge problem with uh, absolute surrender and humility. Okay, who do you think that is? Okay, okay. I just want to read it for us. Isaiah chapter fourteen. I'll uh, read it from verse twelve. Okay, Isaiah fourteen twelve onwards. It says, "How you have fallen from heaven, O morning star." son of the dawn you have been cast down to the earth you who once laid low the nations you said in your heart i will ascend to heaven i will raise my throne above the stars of god i will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly on the utmost heights of the sacred mountain I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. But you are brought down to the grave, to the depths of the pit. Uh, let's go to another book. Uh, let's go to, very quickly, let's go to Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel chapter 28. Uh, okay, I'm going to read uh, Ezekiel 28. I'm going to read verse 14 and 15 and verse 17. Okay, Ezekiel chapter 28. Everybody there? Yeah, okay. Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 14. It says, you were anointed as a guardian cherub, for so I ordained you. You were on the holy mount of God. You walked among the fiery stones. You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created till wickedness was found in you. Let's come down to verse 17. Your heart became proud on the account of your beauty and you corrupted your wisdom because of your splendor. So I threw you to the earth. I made a spectacle of you before kings. Okay, um, guys, uh, those of you who are here and also online, um, if there is anything that I want you to remember from this course, okay, you can forget everything. You can forget the Hebrew words that we will be learning, every definition, whatnot. But just these two things, okay, uh, like the Proverbs says, is let it be like a necklace around you, okay? Humility and pride. 
Remember, humility is the good posture. It's the only posture of worship that you should be focused on. And as soon as pride enters, it's going to destroy your life. Okay? I'll say that again. It will destroy. It will destroy you. I'm not even talking about your ministry. If pride enters you, if you feel entitled about anything, saying, it could be whatever. Right? Oh, I've been coming to this church for 15 years. I've been playing every Sunday. Why should this fellow come and play suddenly? What's that? It's another posture of pride, isn't it? Whatever. It could be so many. Pride can come in so many different ways and so many different forms. I am better than this person. Just as two things. Humility will take you a long way. Pride will destroy you, your calling, your family, everything. It's more dangerous than you think because God absolutely, how to say it, in a very simple word, he hates it. Okay? Uh, we want proof? Sure. Uh, James chapter 4, verse 6. James chapter 4, verse 6. We know what it says, right? God resists the humble. Hey, you guys online all okay? Yeah. Yeah, James chapter 4, verse 6. God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Right? What does resist mean? Resistance. Resist. Everybody say resist. Resist. Okay. R E S I S T. Okay. What does it mean? Push back. Push back. Okay. That's what it means. So resist means. Okay. So um, well, in World War, you know, World War One, World War Two, when an army was coming against, you know, say, okay. When the German army was attacking a certain nation, the English army resisted them. That means they were pushing them back. They, they were holding them, the other army back, right? That's what resistance is. When you don't want a certain person to come too close to you, they're invading your privacy, what do you do? You resist them. You push them back. They're like, hey, stop, <laughs> okay? Think about it. Here, this verse says, God, resists the proud. Now, imagine, so I'm the worship leader, right? I lead worship in the church. Um, I'm a worship leader. The last thing that I want God to do is resist my worship. I'm supposed to be the worship leader, but because of pride in my heart, God is like, he'll do to me what he did to Cain. He's like, yeah, please. No, thanks. I don't care how good your music is. I don't care how good your voice is. I don't care how good you look. I don't care because your heart stinks. So I'm going to resist you. So the last thing that you and I want is to God to resist you. Right? I'm intentionally talking more about the bad posture because I think it's important. Right? Uh, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 34. Anybody? Proverbs chapter 3, verse 34. Um, someone go to Matthew chapter 23, verse 12. First one is Proverbs chapter 3, verse 34. Surely he scorns the scornful. So he mocks the mockers but gives grace to the humble. That means the mockers are full of pride. Right? He mocks the mockers, but gives grace to the humble. Someone, Matthew 23, 12. Okay. Whoever exalts himself, who, you know, self-promotion, have anyone heard of self-promotion? 
wherever you go you know you see okay this is my cv this is my cv this is my cv this is my resume okay i've been this i've been to so many nations i've done so many things i've res res resurrected so many people from the dead you know i've healed so many people's self exaltation right this part of pride but whoever humbles himself who gives god the glory who gives all the credit to him god will exalt him that's matthew matthew chapter 23 verse 12 okay uh are you getting tired of the bible verses no okay just a couple more uh, james chapter 4 verse 10 it says humble yourself before the lord and he will exalt you right humble yourself before the lord and he will exalt you uh i'm going i'll talk more about humility in the latter chapters to come uh right because like I said, guys, this is two words. Remember, when you graduate and go or whatnot, humility and pride. Okay, it will keep you in check. It will keep your heart in its place. Okay. Um, finally, one last uh, passage of scripture. Let's go to Proverbs again. Proverbs. I'm going to read two different chapters. First, uh, you can make a note of it. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 15, and just another verse on pride. Proverbs 16, sorry, uh, 18. Apologies. Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. What is followed? Pride goes before destruction okay can uh, anybody else have another uh, version i have niv um, yeah nkjv message whichever that's 16 18 proverbs chapter 16 verse 18 yes sir Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Pride leads to destruction and arrogance to downfall. See, the pride has, right? The word pride itself is filled with so much of pride. It has so many different words for it you know? arrogance, haughty, entitled. <laughs> um, so what does it say? Pride goes before destruction. I said it will destroy you. That's what destruction is, right? Demolish, like you never even existed. Okay, it goes before destruction in a haughty spirit before a fall. Um, in school, I remember there was a subject called moral science. Did anybody else have moral science in their schools? Okay. Okay, and there was a lesson in that called uh, Pride Has a Fall. I don't know which standard I was in, but then I always remember that. But... Okay, well, one last scripture, guys. Okay, I want us to read this. Uh, Proverbs chapter 6. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 6. Let's read from 16 to 19. Can anyone read Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16? To nineteen. Thank you. Right? So there are six things the Lord hates. If you haven't highlighted that, <laughs> you should. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, make it very colorful. The six things the Lord hates. Okay, if He hates something, we ought to know about it. Okay, uh, seven that are detestable to Him. First on the list. <laughs> what is the first thing on the list? 
proud look another word for pride haughty eyes you know we translation haughty eyes <laughs> okay a proud look wow the first thing on the list of things that god absolutely hates and see the following okay what all it leads to a proud look kind of leads to a lying tongue hands that shed innocent blood a heart that devises wicked schemes feet that are quick to rush into evil a false witness who pours out lies and a man who stirs up dissension among brothers <sighs> i felt like taking a deep breath after reading all that it's i love teaching the subject because it keeps me in check uh it keeps reminding me that it is not about me uh, it's very easy when you've been teaching the subject i don't know for what, almost two decades or what not but and the last two decades at least 20 25 years this generation the previous generation uh have spoken more about worship than about prayer we've we've begun to worship worship did it make sense <laughs> somewhere in this 20 25 years of a journey we've managed to worship worship we've managed to celebrate the lights and the good sound equipment all of that is good necessary important but we've made it all about the stage okay and that's me being brutally honest so coming back to the posture of worship shaha shaha that absolute surrender right it's the ultimate posture of humility but when you come before him when you have a revelation of who this god is that you and i are called to worship uh this will be the default uh response right uh, once again coming back to isaiah chapter 6 when you see when isaiah has this revelation of this god right he sees uh, in the year the king uzziah died i saw the lord lifted high and seated on high enthroned and then the four seraphims crying out to one another holy 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 the lord god the whole earth is full of his glory and the temp- the pillars of the temple shook and then he's seeing all of this and then what is isaiah's response woe unto me for i am a man of unclean lips he realized that he is in the presence of the one where he cannot defend himself he falls face down right uh when moses comes into the presence of god for the first time uh what does god tell him remove your sandals for you are on you're standing on holy ground right um there's something beautiful about humility that god loves something beautiful about another word for humility is brokenness right um everybody say brokenness and a very just uh <clears throat> i'm reminded of this uh, woman this lady who comes to jesus and breaks the alabaster jar um i'll talk about it extensively later but uh, it's one of my favorite acts of worship uh if she comes and she breaks the alabaster jar she fills the whole room with the fragrance she breaks the jar so there is a fragrance of worship that arises in our brokenness right humility brokenness is something that it's like laws of physics like you know gravity you you throw something uh, it has to come down right not throw it but, but 
humility and brokenness it's like a law that heaven cannot ignore you know what i'm saying heaven cannot look at a broken heart and ignore if it sees a heart that is hungry if it sees a heart, if if god is looking at a heart that is broken he can't help but respond he has to come i'm using the words intentionally he has to come and he has always responded like that every time he has seen a desperate heart and a broken heart a heart of humility he says yep i got to go and what happened to hagar in the wilderness right and i can go on and on and on about every time god responded to a broken heart um so i want to pause here for this session guys is uh about the posture of worship just coming back to that is the ultimate posture of worship is humility okay uh you can forget about all the fancy definitions everything uh you know that we were learning which is all important and they are all great um there can be a good posture and a bad posture Uh, the good posture is humility the bad posture is pride um, that is the key takeaway of this lesson that is the moral of the story for the session i guess um right uh, any thoughts any questions anything that you want to add you guys online you guys okay how's your posture in your room huh? Yeah, any thoughts anything? Yes. Yeah. Sit down. Yeah, so that's the thing is that's the I mean so okay uh, the the question here is if heaven is holy uh how did pride enter Lucifer as we know, right? Um Okay, I'm reminded of this verse. Let's go to Job 15:15. 15, 15. Um heaven is not holy. God is holy. Um Where is Job? I think it's Job 15:15. 15, 15. I have a, it's been a while. It better be Job 15:15. 15, 15. <laughs> is it? Okay. Yeah, not bad. My memory is kind of good. Okay. So Job chapter 15 verse 15 uh if says if God places no trust in his holy ones if even the heavens are not pure in his eyes okay so uh, one of the alternate words what we think of for holy or holiness is pure or, or righteousness right so when we say ask someone to be holy we immediately think okay i'm not going to sin i'm not going to lie i'm not going to do a certain things and what not right and there's another psalm that i want us to read um just give me a second guys you can turn to the book of psalms i think psalms <laughs> uh where, where is that psalm the okay so the psalm 89 Psalm 18:9 Justin I see a question uh I'll get to that in just a second okay just wanted to acknowledge your question yeah okay so Psalm 18:9 um I love the psalm Can I read from the top is that okay yeah just follow along with me Psalm 18:9 it says I will sing to the, I will sing of the Lord's great love forever with my mouth I will make your faithfulness known through all generations I will declare that your love stands firm that you established your faithfulness in heaven itself you said I have made a covenant with my chosen one I have sworn to David my servant I will establish your line forever and make your throne firm through all generations okay cool verse 5 the heavens praise your wonders o lord your faithfulness too in the assembly of the holy ones 
for who in the skies above can compare with the Lord? Who is like the Lord among the heavenly beings? Okay, who is like the Lord among the heavenly beings? That means the angels and whatever. Okay, in the council of the holy ones, God is greatly feared. He is more awesome than all who surround him. O oh Lord God Almighty, who is like you? It's a rhetorical question, right? You are mighty, O oh Lord, and your faithfulness surrounds you. Okay? So I want to read that whole passage there because um, it says, Who in the heavenly beings are like the Lord? So basically, when we say God is holy, it simply means that there is no one like him. Okay? So that means he stands alone. Like he is holy by himself so everything else is uh is just a creation like a creature and whatnot so um i mean to answer your question god alone is holy so that doesn't mean heaven in itself is like what Job 15 15 says because in his eyes even the heavens are not pure because uh, there is no one like him uh, and and that's a beautiful reminder of who we are like Isaiah says that, right? So now that I've seen your holiness, I see how sinful I am. Like, woe unto me, for I am a man of unclean lips. Right? So, um, uh, yeah, I hope that answers your question, but we can have a discussion. Uh, Jachin, he has a question from him. It says, to have a humble and a broken spirit before God when circumstances are hard is quite easy. But how do you, we stay consistently humble before God when things are going right for us? Because that's when we stumble. It's an amazing point, Judge, and a, and a question. Thank you for asking. How do we stay humble when things are going right? When, uh, when you've been blessed with everything, uh, you have everything, all that you need, that's when you feel like, okay, why do I need God? Isn't it? Uh, and that's when you need to realize uh, that's when you need God more, right? When He's blessed you with everything. Uh, one of the reasons why David, from the shepherd boy, even when he became a king, uh, one of my favorite Psalms is Psalm 23. Okay, Psalm 23. Uh, we constantly read in first kings uh, and second half of the second kings in the book of first chronicles and whatnot david will constantly go into a cave uh, and to just to worship right um, psalm 23 starts with this line says what the lord is my so the historians say he wrote this psalm somewhere uh, halfway through when he was a king like in his latter years of a king. So imagine this. David has had all the success possible by then. Yes? He's won many battles, many wars. Uh, he, you know, he's a king of a nation. And then he reflects on himself and says, the Lord is my shepherd. In other words, yeah, I'm the king of a nation. I have everything that I need. I have people to do and they will do whatever I tell them to do. But then he just pauses and he reflects and he says, the Lord is my shepherd. So just slowing down a little bit and acknowledging what God has done in your life will keep you on the right track. So uh, that's one of the ways, Jachin, is uh, you know reflecting back on God's faithfulness. Uh, yep, yeah, uh, worship is not limited to time we spend in praising him through a song or saying something verbally. It is a lifestyle. Yes, Nina, it is a lifestyle, yeah. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna just pause the recording here uh, and we'll go for a break now. Okay, I'll see you all in 10 minutes.